Hi guys, it's Brian here, Peace of Eden Homestead, or uh, Horatio, sorry. Uh, I always forget Homer, always wants me to call myself Horatio, and I always forget that. But anyway, I'm here at the Peace of Eden Homestead, out here in the mill yard. There's the mill covered up, keep the rain off it. And uh, last time I was uh, talking about milling lumber, I was splitting these giant oak logs in half. And... Um, I told you I'd bring you back and show you how we're milling them. Um, this particular oak log has a, a secondary trunk coming off of it. So hopefully in this section there will be some really nice um, crotch figure, which is like figured wood in there. And um, unfortunately, even split in half, this log is far too heavy for the tractor that nice beast right there to uh, lift up onto the mill um, and it's also um, over 28 inches it's about 30 I want to say 36 I'd have to measure it again to be sure wide there and our mill will only handle 28 inches so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this uh, lengthwise again and then I'll mill both parts as separate uh, milling projects so I'll bring you along with me and show you how I'm going to do this and uh, and we'll get to it. All right, so if I measure this and see how wide it is, it is uh, actually 43 inches wide. Now, if I were to cut it to 28 right there, then that will be actually almost at, exactly at the center here of this portion of the log. So I think I'm going to do that and then I'll quarter saw this log um, so I end up with quarter saw and oak. And then this section will be um, plain sawn with that crotch figure in it. So I'll, uh, I'll get, get this marked out and show you what we're going to do. All right, so if I lay my tape measure out here, um, the mill will handle 28 inches. But since um, I don't want to worry about the bearings bumping into any parts of it while I'm milling, I'm going to make my mark at 27 inches here. And then make a straight line all the way down the log with the uh, chalk line and then cut it with the chainsaw. I've got the log set up on two other logs to keep it up off the ground while I'm uh, cutting it in half and that way my chainsaw won't go through and hit the ground and dull my chain. So I took my chalk box and I struck a line down where I want to cut this. And you can see here that because the original cut missed a little bit there and I got a high spot, it held my chalk line up. And originally I got this line, but then I went and measured to make sure I was on pace and I restruck just from there to there to get the proper line for where I want so my boards don't taper off by an inch on the end. All right, so I ran out of gas most of the way through the cut. And I have to tell you, I'm no chainsaw expert. Um, I've, you know, I grew up with it and stuff, but I don't do it every day. And you can see here is the groove I marked, and I'm off by about an inch. Um, sometimes a log just makes your chain uh, cut one way or the other. And sometimes there might be a slight difference in how your teeth are ground or something that makes it hard to get a straight line. But I did pretty well most of the way. 
here. You can see I'm about a quarter of an inch off of my groove. Um, now, I do have to say that when you're getting close to the end of the log, you have to realize this log is rounded on the bottom. So when you cut that in half, this part's gonna roll this way and this part's gonna roll this way. So when I get real close to the end, after I gas up here, I'm gonna start standing at the end of the log and working this way rather than on the edge of the log because I don't want that to roll over and hit me. So you always gotta think things through before you start, especially when you're out working by yourself like I am today, you gotta be extra careful and take time to do what you need to do so that you don't get hurt. Change the camera angle a little bit here so you can see the other end of the log better when I finish it up. So that was a little dicey, especially at the end when that flipped out and pulled the chainsaw out of my hands. Um, which, best thing you can do when something like that happens is just get out of the way as fast as you can and make sure that you're clear of any, uh, like clear of the chain on the chainsaw. Um, of course, as soon as it pulled it out of my hands, my hands off the trigger, so the chain stopped. But still, that was a little scary. I think next time, um, what I'll do is get close and then I'll take the forks of the tractor and stick them down in the in the uh, slot from the chainsaw, the kerf that I cut from the chainsaw, and just split it with the, the forks from the tractor the rest of the way rather than have it pull the chainsaw out of my hands. I actually did that on a log before, and that didn't happen, so that was unexpected. So I, I guess the lesson there is expect the unexpected. So anyway, everything worked out fine. I didn't get hurt or anything, but... Still, that was a little startling, so be careful when you're out there. So you can see here where it split. This is where it split the last little bit, but I think it would have been better if I would have stopped cutting around here so the logs would stay together. And then from that point, um, go ahead and put the forks down in between the two pieces and wiggle it back and forth till it splits in half. So. We'll do that next time. You live and learn. That is some perfectly clear, not a single knot in that. That's going to be some beautiful oak lumber. So, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with what quarter sawing is, let me see if I can explain it to you. It's kind of hard to see on this log the growth rings. When trees grow, they start small and they add a little bit on every year and you end up with growth rings. And the growth rings go something like this. Now, if you just cut a plain sawn tree, you'd leave the whole tree round, and you'd, well, I'll go, I'll go like this so you can see it. You go the whole tree round, and then you just start cutting like this to get all your boards out of it. Now what's gonna happen is the, uh, the boards that you cut, when you plane saw are going to be like this and if you can see because the growth rings go like this you end up with a cup shaped growth ring in your board now what that'll do is your board as the humidity in it changes it will actually cup the board so instead of staying flat it will do this when it's humid and it'll do that when it's dry so you you have unstable wood there now on the other hand if you quarter saw a log what you do is you cut a couple of pieces like this and then a couple of pieces like this and then a couple of pieces like this and a couple of pieces like this now what that does if you look at the growth rings on this then they're at 90 degrees basically 
to the top and bottom of the board. Same thing here. So you can usually get a couple of cuts before you have to flip the log. Um, and then when you flip the log, because the growth rings curve, you can see that the growth rings in this piece will be straight this way. Now what that does is it makes your board, instead of cupping, it just gets a little bit wider and narrower because no matter how what you do to wood, it's always going to move. So um, if it just moves like this, then your, your board isn't going to bow up like this when you're cutting it. It makes a much more stable piece of wood and also, which you'll see later most likely, you can kind of see one right here. You're going to have medullary ray flex. And the medullary ray flex in oak are just a growth that goes like, uh, I don't even know what it's called, but it connects the, across the, the growth rings of the tree. And it makes really pretty shiny spots basically all over your wood. So um, that's why I'm going to go to the trouble of quarter sawing this piece. Now this piece, because it has that uh, branch up there, or that crotch up there, usually that gets really nice figure in the crotch where it's uh, it's because the there's pressure on the wood as it grows and it makes neat little grain patterns. So this one I'm actually going to plane saw just like this straight up straight from top to bottom. This one I'm going to quarter saw like I showed you in the example here. we got it loaded we got the other one out of the way and we will get to milling because I got this log on here and as you can see it's not a perfectly straight cut along there and I can't have these uh, log arms up to keep it from sliding this way when I cut because I'm gonna be cutting the bottom first so those have to be out of the way. So I just put some wood strips there to keep it away. Now what I'm gonna do is take a couple of cuts off the bottom and then I'll flip the log and take a couple of cuts off the bottom. So that's why quarter sawn, while it is a superior product, is considerably more expensive because boy is it a lot more work to quarter saw wood than it is to just slap a log up there and just cut, 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 cut till you're done. 
So I'll get busy with that now. So that first cut I took, I took it three inches. So that bottom slab is now three inches thick on the ends. But see, when I originally cut this in half, the cut's not perfect, so it goes up and down. And what I didn't want to do is cut down at an inch and then have this shift and break my blade. So I took a nice thick slab. Now I can pull this top part off, flip that slab over and then I have a flat surface on the bed and then I can cut my um, one inch boards out of that and I'll do the same thing for the other side so I lined up the forks so that they will stop this bottom board from sliding and I can slide this top um, can't off of the top of the board so it won't be easy because this is heavy but we'll get it off of there Now I can just flip this one over and mill as many one inch boards out of it as I can. Which will probably be one full one. And then, oh, maybe a couple of skinny um, uneven pieces. We'll see. Hopefully you can see why I cut it the way I cut it by cutting this slab off and flipping it is because if this was propping up this end unevenly and this was propping up this end unevenly and when I if I would have tried to cut just an inch off of there then that log could have shifted and broke my blade so all right it uh, looks like I'm gonna get um, just one good one by out of this, but I mean, it's one by 15 or 16, something like that. I forget what my measurement was over there, but so it's a good sized piece of wood. It's just, uh, I essentially, by not getting the, by when I'm ripping that log in quarters, if you get off your line or if you tilt the, um, chainsaw bar one way or the other this way it's really hard to keep it perfectly straight um, if it moves at all then you end up with an uneven cut and this was a three inch slab if it would have been cut straight and now I'm only going to get one one inch piece out of it and then probably a couple of pieces I can use for cutting boards so anyway let me get cutting and get this other one cut and then get the log back up here
So let me uh, take this scarred piece from the chainsaw off and then brush down this board and hopefully I'll be able to show you exactly why I'm going to the trouble of quarter sawing this. All right, a moment of truth. This is why I do this. And I love doing this because every log is like, I don't know, it's like a surprise to see what's inside. So let me bring you over here and see if we can see what there is to see about this medullary ray flex, this beautiful grain. Fortunately, we got a little bit of a sunspot here. So these flex, got a real wide one there. A bunch of smaller ones and along in this piece as well um, those really when they're finished up they just glow it's just gorgeous so that's why i'm going to the trouble besides just having a stable board or more stable than a plain sawn board that's why i'm going to the trouble of quarter sawing this now unfortunately you can see here i still got a little bit of chainsaw mark in this one board but I got a good four foot piece there and a good four foot piece there that I could probably uh, book match together um, where you just clean up these sides and glue them together and so the grain is a mirror image of itself and that make a nice coffee table and then uh, these two pieces probably be big enough for a, a nice dining table so anyway um, since I still have such good medullary reflex in this one I'm gonna put that log back up here and then take another cut or two off the bottom of it um, so I can get as many of the widest pieces as possible. And I know it's a little extra work instead of just flipping it and going the other way, but to me it's worth it so that I get uh, the widest pieces that I can get out of each log. Well, I lifted this log up that I just said I was going to try to take a couple more cuts off the bottom. Um, I lifted it up and looked underneath it. And it appears that there aren't a whole lot of medullary ray flex. So then I came over here to the end of the log to see why. And if you look at the, the uh, growth rings, here's one of the growth rings right here. And if you see, the, they're coming in at an angle now. I'm going to exaggerate it here. So they're closer to rift sawn. Now rift sawn is where you have your board cut and the growth rings are at a 45 degree angle. It's still a decent product, but it's not going to have as many or as pronounced medullary reflex as they will if you, uh, if you have the growth rings more of a 90 degree angle. Like if you look at this side of the log, sorry, if you look at this side of the log, the green goes like that. And so I can take one, two, three, probably three or four cuts and still get um, those medullary reflex I'm wanting. Now, um, from that point, it gets down to where um, it doesn't matter which side I cut from because they're going to be roughly the same width. And um, you can choose to either cut one from here and an inch narrow one from here and an inch narrow one from here an inch narrow till you get down to nothing or just saw the rest of this straight and i think that's what i'm going to do is i'll roll this over with this rough side on the bottom and i'll take a cut just like i did on that one um, to true it up and then i'll cut whatever i can get out of the piece that i take off and then i will just saw the rest of it straight through so that'll speed the process up a little bit. Um, I should still get some nice quarter sawn boards out of this and uh, be happy with it. And then once we're done with that, I'll go pick that one up over there with the uh, crotch figure in it and we will uh, cut that one straight through. So the rest of these cuts should be pretty quick, except for the very first set of cuts on this one. Here's something I ought to show, show you guys. You have to be careful about when you have wet oak especially, but wet wood in general, but oak, the tannins in the wood, 
when they come in contact with steel, they make black marks on the wood, so you try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, these, fortunately, were only there for a second, so they probably are for, you know, a couple minutes, so it probably won't leave too bad of a mark on them. Um, <clears throat> but uh, another, another good thing about the bad situation is that we're sawing it this way, so it'll just be a little mark on the edge of each board, so... Anyway, I got this up there. Um, I'll get it moved over and uh, take that bottom slab off and we should be good. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, we seem to be making good contact across most of the um, cross beams on the mill. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna put a couple shims under any parts that are up above it and then I can just mill it from the top down. So that'll save some time. All right, too. we got it clamped in and we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut it. I'll set the camera up over here on the tractor so that you get a better view of what we're doing here. There you go, we got it all milled up. Uh, that last cut, I got a little uh, held up here because I had my uh, blade guide in close and it hit this clamp right here. So I had to move it out, get past the clamp and then move it back in. But uh, I'll see if we got any pretty wood out of here and uh, I'll bring the camera over and let you guys check it out. So here's the first six boards off of the uh log we just milled and you can see i have them book matched and what i was telling you about book matched is originally this log was together like this and then we cut it and if we open it up like a book and join that edge there and you end up with some really cool grain patterns in it it's all pretty straight down there and then you have this little curve where a branch was starting to form in the tree and if I come over here you start to see that branch is coming through as a knot and so it really can add some nifty it really can add some nice nice character to anything you're building with this I'll go ahead and unstack these next boards and see what we have as that knot gets bigger all right, so we got deeper into that. And you can see all the character there with all the swirling grain and stuff on that book match set. And then over here, that um, the knot that was a little rotted out in that section is no longer rotted out. It's just solid wood now. And we're starting to get bunch of medullary ray flex in these two and then this third one which is the last solid piece we have uh, it has a bunch of them so let me go over there and show you that so this one has this medullary ray flex all through here and you can see them like kind of spreading out in a V pattern there and then where the sun's better you can see them a little better here but that whole board so what i might do is since i have the narrowest boards stacked this way to the widest board i'll probably take this board that has medullary reflex or more of them and i'll flip that over to book match it with this wider one so i have a nice wide piece there and then i'll just keep going back so that instead of having one oddball piece that's really wide I'll have a really narrow oddball piece and we'll get it, um, get them all dried out and we can make some beautiful furniture and cabinetry with this. Thought I'd bring you over to the sunshine, give you a little better look at what these medullary reflex look like. Get some water on here. It's 
really hard to capture on video how beautiful this stuff really is but it's just gorgeous stuff maybe from this angle might be a little better my shadows in the way or maybe from this angle but either way there's just some gorgeous gorgeous wood i love how the flex go this way here and this way here around that knot and that knot makes just a beautiful heart that's just going to make something gorgeous i can't wait to get this in the wood shop once it's dry and make something beautiful well all i have left to do is get this stacked up in the kiln um that's a pretty big job when you're working by yourself especially since the kiln's so full let me go walk you over to the kiln and uh and show you what we got going over there so i built this kiln i had some siding cut for it but i still need to stain it and put it on but um this kiln is completely built out of um, lumber that we milled from trees on our property here um, milled it all built it uh, the sliding glass door panels in the front are uh they are actually um just scraps from old remodeling jobs i've done um, replace some doors replace some windows that sort of thing i actually have tons of windows to build a greenhouse the top is greenhouse plastic stretched over the rafters it is 25 feet long and eight feet wide and i want to say it's seven feet on this corner and 16 17 feet something like that on that corner I have a door on both sides it's all insulated thanks to homer the homesteader and overall dave insulated I, I did part of it but they did most of it and then it's already filling up i saw a lot of plans on the internet for people uh making you know five foot by ten foot kilns and i'm like i'm gonna make it a lot bigger than that i'll make it eight feet by 25 feet and I'm just fascinated. Let me, well, I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what we got in here a little better. So I am just a hair over six feet tall. And you can see that stack by the front is taller than I am. And it's uh, about 13 feet long on the long ones. Um, the top stack was the edge of a log and it gets shorter as you go. And then I have some boards in here anywhere from 2 inches wide and 28 inches, I'm sorry, 2 inches thick and 28 inches uh, wide by 13 feet long. And I got four of those. Most of it I milled at a little over 1 inch, so it'll finish at, you know, 3 quarters. Um, and then I have some smaller pieces from other logs that I milled and so this whole stack is very nearly four feet wide and then the uh, 16 inches here is only about four feet tall and the 28 inches here is about six feet tall now over in that other corner over there that right there is some lumber that uh homer the homesteader cut a tree down and milled it for um for a fellow he knows wants to build some stuff out of some special wood so that's taped off so that we know not to use that on the top over there there's a four inch slab that's drying for a client of ours thank you chuck he's going to make a workbench out of that it's four inches by i forget it's been a while since i milled it but 16 or 17 inches wide and i think it's seven or eight feet long and then here's some smaller lugs we milled a while back. Those are probably just about dry. Uh, it gets very warm in here. Uh, eventually, I'm going to stretch a dark colored tarp along the bottom of those um, rafters there. And then I'll set up fans to circulate the air around and around and around. And I'll put some vents in here. Right now, the, the venting is mostly just when that greenhouse uh, plastic flexes when it gets warm in there. It allows heat out of the top and the ends so anyway that's what we got going here and i think that i'll be able to stack that quarter sawn lumber right here on this stack on top of these shorter pieces 
Um, you see they're all stickered so that the air, or that these little pieces of wood here between them are called stickers. Uh, they're really just spacers, but in the industry, uh, wood, wood milling industry, they call them stickers. But uh, anyway, we'll get those boards we just cut stickered in here and uh, then we'll stickered and stacked and then we'll cut the rest of that uh, the rest of the log over there but I think I'm gonna save that for another video because this one's already really long I sure appreciate you coming along with me while I showed you some things about melon lumber and quarter sawn and plain sawn and all that fun stuff I hope you learned a little bit I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching us here at the Peace of Eden homestead